welcome back in this lecture 12 i will continue my discussion on thermal initiation which i started in the last lecture and i will also talk about molecular weight and kinetic chain length i will also discuss few other types of radical initiator and start i will start the discussion on transfer reactions in radical chain polymerization now this is the expression for rate of polymerization which we derived in couple of lectures back and in case of thermally initiated polymers polymerization ri can be replaced with this expression to give you this following expression which we discussed in the last lecture as well now we can replace the rate of polymerization in differentiation form where we are talking about rate of disappearance of monomers from the reaction mixture being the rate of polymerization and we can integrate this expression from monomer at 0 time to some time at t at t is equal to 0 to t is equal to t then we get this expression p is the expression p is expressed as this quantity where m not or m0 is the initial monomer concentration and m is the monomer concentration at time t and p is called extent of conversion of monomers to the polymer similarly as we talked about extent of polymerization being the percentage of or fraction of functional groups converted in step growth polymerization. We can also express i in terms of this as this is a first order decomposition reaction. Now in this expression we can find out k d by finding out or determining the amount of monomer present in the medium after some time and if we do it 2, 3 different times then we can from those result we can find out what is the value of k d. For example, if we leave the reaction for long enough time almost like infinite time maximum time is possible when there is no further reaction then we replace p with p infinity and we get this expression. So, in this is the concentration of monomer present when the reaction is completed or when enough time has been given for reaction to happen and p is the conversion at time long enough time. Now, if we divide this equation by this equation then we can get this expression. So, if we know the value of p and p infinity then we can get the value of k d. We can get the value of k d from any two times we can do experiment at two different time and get p value to find out what is the value of k d. Let us quickly do a numerical problem where we are talking about a benzoyl, benzoyl peroxide initiated polymerization of a monomer follows the simple kinetic scheme which we just discussed where rate constant and f being independent conversion. For a polymerization system m0 is given to molar and i0 also given 10 to the minus 2 molar and the limiting conversion p infinity is given at 10 percent which means 0.1. So, we need to increase p infinity from 10 percent to 20 percent what should we do? Would we increase or decrease m0 or by what factor or would we increase or decrease by uh, i0 by what factor? Now, this is the expression of p infinity. So, you can see that there is no term m0 here. So, basically we cannot change m0 and 
increase the P infinity value from 10 percent to 20 percent. We can change the initial initiator concentration I 0 and we can change the P infinity value. So, we can plot or write 1 minus 0.2 this is that our target P infinity value required and 1 minus 0.1. So, given by I naught 0 at 20 percent conversion 20 percent P infinity value and I naught 10 percent to the power half. So, this gives the ratio of I not at 20 percent divided by I not 10 percent as 4.48. So, basically we have to increase the initial initial initiator constant concentration almost 4.5 times to increase the limiting monomer conversion from 10 percent to 20 percent. Okay, let us talk about kinetic chain length. Kinetic chain length is related to molecular weight of the polymer produced in this reaction. We will talk about molecular weight in the next slide. First, let us define what is kinetic chain length. Kinetic chain length of a radical chain polymerization is defined as the average number of monomer molecules consumed or polymerized per each radical which initiates a polymer chain. Let me explain this in little detail. We know a radical say R dot initiates a polymerization reaction and this is the schematic representation of the monomer and we get a propagating radical. So, each propagating radical is a kinetic chain and the number of monomer molecules consumed per or polymerized per R dot in this particular case is called the kinetic chain length. So, nu is the kinetic chain length for this particular propagating radical or kinetic chain. Now, let me explain little more. For example, if I think that for unit time for let us say 1 minute or 1 hour, 1 minute let us consider 1 minute. Now, 500 monomer are polymerized or consumed in 1 minute, in 1 minute. Now, at the same time 5 radicals initiated polymer chain and same time in 1 minute. So, in 1 minute 500 monomers are consumed. So, this is nothing but rate of polymerization Rp because Rp is described by or defined by the rate of disappearance of monomer or consumption of monomer. So, this is nothing but Rp and 5 is the number of radicals which initiates polymer chain. So, it, this is nothing but rate of initiation. Now, so this is equivalent to rate of initiation and this is equivalent to rate of polymerization. Now, in this case 500 monomers has consumed and 5 radicals as initiated polymer chain. So, each polymer chain or propagating polymer chain in this case will have on average 500 by 500 monomers, which means the kinetic chain length for this case is 100 on average is 100 and which is given by Rp divided by Ri. So, nu is given by rate of polymerization or rate of consumption of monomer from the reaction mixture and 
this is the rate of initiation of polymer chain. So, for a given time if we divide by this R p by R i, I should get the kinetic chain length which is the number of monomer units consumed per each radical. Now, we can also write this is equivalent to R t because from the steady state assumption we know this is nothing R i equals to R t. So, we can write kinetic chain length is R p divided by R i which is nothing but R p divided by R t and we know the expression for R t is k p m dot m remember m dot is the concentration of total radical present in the reaction mixture and R t is given by twice k t m dot square. So, we can replace this two and uh, in this expression and m dot m dot cancels out one of the m dot cancels out. So, we get this expression to find out this m dot we again rearrange this to get uh, this expression we have we have done it earlier and for a thermally initiated chain this is the rate of initiation. So, we can replace this value here and from there to m dot value we get the kinetic chain length expression is this for thermally initiated radical polymerization. So, again once again kinetic chain length is the number of monomer units consumed per each radical produced which basically initiated the polymer chain. Now, what is the relation between kinetic chain length and molecular weight? Again this is the propagating radical or the kinetic chain length. Now, we know that this propagating radical actually get terminated mainly by two methods one by combination or coupling method which is the most most abundant or most feasible way of getting in termination of or actually termination happens and the other is by disproportionation. Now, if coupling happens what will happen like in case of coupling I have one radical another radical which combines or couple give, give us a single monomer chain. So, two two kinetic chain or two propagating radical reacts with each other and forms a dead single dead polymer chain. So, in this case what will if if this is this that means there is new number of monomer units and in this case also new number of monomer units then total m plus n value would be twice n. So, degree of polymerization would be twice n in this case. Now, what is the number of initiator residues present in this chain? I have one this side and the there is another in the other sides. So, I have so if if this two reacts I get a single polymer chain and in this case two ends I have two initiator residues. So, if the termination happens by combination or coupling then the degree of polymerization is given by twice the kinetic chain length and the number of initiator residues present in a single polymer chain is given by 2 because both sides we have one initiator residues. Now, if the termination happens by disproportionation then we have 2 polymer chain which average number of monomers will be new because I have 2 chains which giving 2 kinetic chain or 2 propagating radical giving 2 chains. So, on average the kinetic the value of degree of polymerization would be equal to kinetic chain length and in this case 
there would be one initiator residues per polymer chain. So, in general we can write degree of polymerization given by B, B is the fraction of B is the um, average number of initiator fragments or initiator residues per polymer chain and we can just rearrange this to get this expression where A is the fraction of propagating chains undergoing termination by coupling reaction. Now, we know M n is given by M naught which is the monomer molecular weight or structural unit molecular weight multiplied by degree of polymerization. In this case we are talking about average number average degrees of polymerization. So, we get number average molecular weight if we are using x w then we also can get m w in this case. So, this is how m m n or number average molecular weight or molecular weight is related to kinetic chain length through degree of polymerization. So, we know from these expressions that m n or the molecular weight is proportional to the kinetic chain length and we have found out the kinetic chain length expression for ch kinetic chain length in last slide. So, we can go back and revisit this is the expression for rate of polymerization and this is the rate of uh, expression for kinetic chain length which is also proportional to molecular weight and this is of course, for thermal initiation um, polymerization and if we can look at this expression if we increase molecular weight then both rate of polymerization and molecular weight or kinetic chain length increases. So, both of them increases and if we increases the initiator concentration then the rate of polymerization will increase, but the molecular weight or the kinetic chain length decreases. So, it is always preferable to do a radical chain polymerization to at a higher monomer concentration to get high um, rate of polymerization as well as high molecular weight, but there are some problem of using high monomer concentration which we will discuss uh, in, in coming uh, lectures. So, basically this is important we should know that if we want to increase the rate of polymerization and molecular weight we can increase the monomer concentration, but if we increase the initiator concentration then it increases the rate of polymerization, but it do not increase it does not increase or rather decrease the molecular weight. Now, how to select the uh, thermal initiator for the polymerization we plan to do and that is given by the T hab value and what is my time of experiment required. For example, if we give the value for some of the T hub values for uh, common initiators like A i B n if I write the values for 50 degree centigrade it is 74 hours 70 degree centigrade it is 4.8 hours 85 degree centigrade we do not not reported 100 degree centigrade it is 7.2 minute. For benzoyl peroxide 7.3 hours 1.4 hours 20 minute. So, if you look at this data generally we look for AI, uh, the initiator which uh, basically have half an hour between in this range. So, if we do the reaction say with AIBN at very high temperature 100 degree centigrade the, the most of the initiator will decompose at very fast time half of the initiator will decompose within 7.2 minutes. So, the reaction rate will be very fast, but as a result what will happen our molecular will be drastically low as well as if the rate is rate of polymerization is very high there are some problem which 
I will discuss in coming slides. So, generally AIBN is used in the range of 60 degree centigrade to 80 degree centigrade and uh, benzoyl peroxide is a used in 80 degree centigrade to 95 degree centigrade. So, what is the reaction temperature required and that is given by also the solvent which we are using. Depending on that we actually choose the radical initiator which we want to use for our polymerization reaction. Typical value for the dissociation uh, or the rate, uh, rate constant for dissociation uh, is around 10 to the power 4 to 10 to the power minus 9 second and the practical value for KD is 10 to the power minus 2, 10 to the power minus 6 second inverse. So, this is the re required uh, KD value generally we use for the standard polymerization, radical polymerization reaction. Now, we also know there is a term in the initiator uh, rate of initiation and rate of polymerization and also uh, kinetic chain length which is given by F which is initiator efficiency. Initiator efficiency is nothing but the fraction of radicals which got produced in the, dis in the first step which actually could start a polymerization process. For example, if I generate 100 radicals in the first step dissociation step and out of which 80 actually start a polymerization chain and 20 get lost by some other mechanism then our my efficiency would be 0.8 or 80 percent. And generally uh, the uh, way it basically gets uh, disappear some of the radicals are lost. For example, if I take the case of AIBN and uh, I have this radical and then this can self uh, react with each other and this radical can react with each other and form non radical species which is unable to which will be unable to start the polymerization reaction. So, some of the AIBN radicals are lost. Similarly, it can also react with itself to form this molecule. And other example could be a benzoyl peroxide. For example, benzoyl peroxide can produce uh, this radical and uh, this is the radical first produced from benzoyl, benzoyl uh, peroxide and this can react with itself and produce a non-radical species. So, some of the radicals are lost in this way. And this, this uh, can also dissociate to form a radical like this uh, plus uh, carbon dioxide which can actually also react with each other among themselves to form non-radical species. So, basically this is some of the example how these radicals which are produced in the first step of dissociation can get destroyed and not used for starting a polymerization chain. And the fraction of the radicals which got generated in the first dissociation step used for polymerization chain initiation is called initiator efficiency that we, we understood now. No, after, after going through the initiation by thermal mechanism, there are other mechanism for initiation. For example, redox initiation and I will go little fast in this initiation because I said in the beginning that the thermal initiation method is the most used method in both industry and academia. So, in many oxidation reaction reduction, many oxidation reduction reaction produces radicals that can be used for 
initiate polymerization reaction and we call that process as redox initiation or redox activation. And the advantage is that this initiation can take place at moderate temperature as well as lower temperature. Now, some of these redox systems involve direct electron transfer between reductant and oxidant while others involve the intermediate formation of reductant oxid oxidant complex. And some of the examples are peroxide in combination of reducing agents like hydrogen peroxide with uh, ferrous ion giving you this hydroxy radical and ferric ion. And there are other peroxides which can be used um, some of them generic structure are shown here. So, this can undergo oxidation reduction reaction to produce these radicals. And not only we can use uh, ferrous ion, but we can use other ions also which can themselves get oxidized and reduce the peroxides to form radical. There are other ways to also generate uh, for example, acyl peroxides. Uh, can be used in organic media along with amines as reactant and the example is benzoyl peroxide. And uh, the in case of benzoyl peroxide the advantage is that we can use this in organic media and, uh, and we can use basically in organic media. The other the example for redox initiation is a combination of variety of inorganic reactants and ox inorganic oxidants for example, par sulfates and say iron um, ferrous ion producing this uh, radical anion radical and we can use this system as well. There is a very common Make such example which are used for in, in biology labs for making acrylamide gels for electrophoresis. In that case the radical initiator used is ammonium persulfate APS plus a diamine TE general is called TE dimet tetra in 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 dash in dash methylene ethylene diamine. This is a very standard initiator pair used for making acrylamide gels which is a very standard techniques in biology labs for doing protein electrophoresis, protein electrophoresis. So, if we now we know the examples of redox initiation and uh, the rate expression, we again use the same rate of polymerization where in case of in this case we will use the rate of initiation for redox initiation which is given by KD of concentration of reductant and concentration of oxidant. So, we replace this Ri with this expression to get this. There is another common way to use initiation process is photo initiation and the advantage of photo initiation is that polymerization can be uh, done uh, by limiting like uh, we can direct the light in a part of the reaction mixture to polymerize that part. And we can switch off switch on the polymerization by switching off and on the light. So, basically we can turn on the polymerization process by turning the light switching uh, off and on. The initiation rate also can be very fast and can be controlled by a combination of sources like uh, factors like source of radicals, light intensity and temperature. And 
the advantage is that industry and photopolymerization is typically used for solvent free systems which is uh, very environmentally friendly. But the disadvantage is that the light cannot enter a um, dip in a reaction mixture. So, if the reaction mixture is uh, thickness is low like if you want to do polymerization in a film or something like that coatings then a photopolymerization is probably preferable because in that case light do not need to penetrate a higher thickness. So, in this case uh, photopolymerization is well suited for surfaces and other thin layer applications like printing and coating industries. Some of the examples are like uh, benzoketones and uh, benzoins and even AIBN also can produce uh, a radical on shining light. And uh, these are some of the example which we are generally used for photopolymerization. And the rate expression is given by this the rate of initiation is given by R i in this case is twice A phi dash i a where i a is the intensity of light and phi a phi dash is the number of radical produced per light photon absorbed and f is the initiator efficiency as we described before. So, the rate of polymerization will be just replacing the R i with this expression we get this. There are other methods which are sometimes used by uh, for radical initiation and one example is like uh, ionizing radiation which by either uh, using radioactive source and particle accelerator or using very high energy radiation for example, gamma rays and x-ray. And then the mechanism is very complex, but is basically uh, some of the uh, simple way to show the mechanism of formation of radical by high energy radiation as is shown here. And examples like particulate radiation like electron beam, neutron beam and alpha particle and in that case this is the simple way of showing how the radical is produced in that radiation, but the process is really complex. And there is also possibility that uh, sometimes we store a monomer sample in, in lab or in plant, it sometimes actually gets polymerized by itself. Especially if we keep it in outside room temperature and this happens during summer time, especially if we keep a bottle of styrene outside and it is always uh, found out that after some time few few months or something you that bottle is basically became a glass material and the styrene inside the bottle is polymerized. And that happened because it is self monomer itself produces radical and um, basically initiates the chain reaction and that does not happen for everything. If actually have if you look carefully then we can find out that actually the impurities present like peroxide peroxides or some other impurities which presents they actually dissociate themselves to produce radical in ambient condition in, in presence of light that and they actually start the radical polymerization process. There are ex few exceptions like styrene and uh, we saw that in case of styrene actually two styrene actually for polymer dimerize uh, del solder way to get this and which uh, basically produces one hydrogen atom transfer happen between the dimer and a styrene monomer to produce this two radical which actually polymerize start polymerization and form um, a polystyrene during. So, basically if we want to store styrene is very difficult to store unless we keep it at low temperature and in dark. So, most of the styrene bo bottle comes with little bit of stabilizer. We, we will talk about stabilizer in next uh, 
next lecture. So, with this I will stop. So, we basically completed the uh, examples and the rate uh, expression for the different types of initiation processes.